OK, so what XML stands for? It stands for Extendable Markup Language. Okay. So out of this uh, uh, abbreviation, you will realize that we are talking about language, and indeed this is a language. Markup, we actually got uh, acquainted with the markup uh, abbreviation in uh, HTML. And the extendable simply stands for uh, possibility of making another languages out of that. So you can take XML as a base, Im a base language and derive some, you, cre you can create your own images, uh, sorry, images, uh, create your own languages out of XML, okay? So you can derive other languages, like for example, there are some languages available for astronomy, for example, some people are interested in astronomy, they create their own language, which describes some stars and the properties of the star and so on, based on the XML. Okay, this is outside of the topic. We are not uh, working with that, and most probably are not going to face that possibility at the work. But that's what the uh, uh, abbreviation stands for. Okay, extendable markup language. Okay, but we are not going to explore this extendable part of it. We are going to explore markup language. Okay, so XML looks like HTML. That's why knowledge of HTML definitely will be very helpful uh, when learning XML. But what actually makes XML different from HTML is the principle uh, at this moment. So uh, XML is designed to store, carry, and exchange data. So and this keyword here out in this statement is data. This is the most important part of this statement, data. So anything which comes to do with the data, XML comes to be very handy. Okay, HTML has completely different purposes, right? HTML was used to manipulate text attributes. We were manipulating text, we're changing text attributes, font size, colors, creating different pages with different outlook, but we never thought about the data because we didn't care, right? We were actually working with the te text. In this case, XML has to do with the data, anything which comes with the data, okay? Uh, XML was not designed to display data. It's not the goal of the language. Okay, so you cannot require XML to show the, the, your data very nice for in a very nice format. But you can require that XML will store your data and makes that data available to anyone who is interested. And that's a crucial difference between HTML and XML. Okay, they have completely different purposes, and uh, that's the uh, crucial differences between them. And XML is more, uh, the, I mean, it's more uh, advanced. You have more features than HTML. It's not so simple as HTML. And that's what we're going to explore today. Okay. So next slide is that where XML is used. And XML can be separate data from HTML. It means that we, uh, at the end of the HTML class, we use CSS uh, style. Remember, when we actually use the style CSS file, to control the outlook of the HTML file. Okay? Now imagine that you have some HTML document which contains data. That might be HTML document which lists all your books you have, for example, your uh, library at home. Maybe you have, say, 500 books, and you create HTML document which will list all these books. You can create ordered list, unordered list, but nevertheless, you are going to display all these books in the HTML file. right? And then you realize that you actually, in, the, in reality, have two, uh, two things combined into one. One thing is that your HTML document, which uses HTML style, and then you use formatting, background image, and so on. And on the other hand, you have a data, which actually consists of your books. Okay? So it's good to separate them together uh, from each other. So and XML can actually achieve that, I mean, separation. So you can store information about books in a XML format, in XML document, and then have separate documents, separate HTML document, which will pull out this data and show you in XML, uh, HTML format. And then that, that document, that HTML for, uh, document, will handle only about the formats and the layout and the data itself, where actually books are listed with authors, with the publishing care, and so on, will be saved in an XML document. Okay, that will be, XML will handle the data. Uh, XML is used to exchange data that's widely used. Actually, it goes through the internet. A lot of data is uh, sent and received in the form of uh, XML. And uh, sh sharing data, data where it, going close to the exchange. And uh, storing data, you can store your data in XML, any kind of data. Don't be limited, I mean, it's not limited to the books or your medical records or whatever, any kind of data. And it can be, make your data more useful. Uh, it means that 
uh, you have more control and more checkups on, uh, on the information you have. For example, if you have a library of your books, and then when you enter that information to that library, you can make a typo, right? Instead of year 2012, you can enter, say, uh, uh, 2200, something like that, okay? So uh, HTML, it's okay. It can actually show, it will uh, perfectly show you uh, that information, 2000, uh, 2212, which is incorrect. But XML can actually, has meaning, means to, uh, to check that validity of that data. And then if it turns out that the year is not valid, then it can actually co uh, catch that. H HTML lacks that capability. Okay. So, uh, and as already said, you can uh, use XML to derive, create new uh, ML languages, this says uh, ML, because this part will remain unchanged and the star stands for anything, can be, so for example, chemical ML, something like that, or physical ML, or astronomy ML, okay? But we're not going to cover this part. It's outside of the scope of this class. Okay, any questions? By saying any data, does that mean music files? Uh, if you are very creative, you can, but uh, the area where I saw mostly, and might be, you might be interested in, I saw um, actually XML files which contain text, test cases. <laughs> Essentially, QA engineers created test cases in this XML format and they have special script which reads this XML file and then executes these test cases. Okay, so many examples of that. And these XML files can be regarded as a part of another language. Okay, then we can go automated uh, test uh, ML language, something like that, okay? You can do that. That's the area where you will face most probably it, okay? Uh, unless you work in a special company with they the derive their own language and then you are going to test that. Okay, but typically that will be it. Any other questions? Oh, clear, okay. So um, uh, XML has more strict layer rules compared with HTML, so we have to follow. If you are not following these rules, then you are not going to see XML document properly in the browser. And uh, uh, the, the rules are following. This is just the beginning of rules. Uh, absolute very first character in your document, whenever you open and create XML document, the very first character should not be empty line, should not be space, should be this angle bracket, okay? If it's not the case, then this document is not good. Okay. So the very first character, the very first line, very first row, very first column, character should be angle bracket. After that, you should have this uh, question, uh, question mark and then XML, no spaces. And then space version, you specify version of XML. Most probably, say 95% of all cases, version will be specified as 1.0. There's another version 1.1, one, one, which is more suitable for national characters. But in most cases, they use 1.0. Okay, so we'll stick to this version. Encoding is optional. So you may have it, may not. In this case, we say encoding is late in one. And after that, we should have question mark and closing uh, angle bracket. That's called XML declaration. That should be the very first line. The very first character should be this angle bracket. And that line should be the very first one in XML document. Okay. And uh, uh, we are going to talk about the root element in XML file. We are not discussing it right here. So, but it should be only one root element, okay? And we are going to see what the root element is, okay? And then all uh, tags, which you are, you are familiar from HTML class, and you remember that in HTML we have some tags which did not require counterparts like BR, HR, right? Uh, we don't have such tags here. So all HTML tags should be opening and closing, no exceptions, okay? This rule actually makes life easier, okay? So if you don't have closing one, it means that's an error, that's not good, okay? We have to fix it. Um, any questions? No, okay. So here's an example of, uh, uh, I don't have it here, okay. I, for some reason, slide is missing. Okay, so this is five. Okay, uh, let me ch fix that because that's not good. Uh, for some reason, this slide is missing. I don't know why. Uh, okay, this is six. Okay, I'm going to do that.
Okay. Uh, so this is important slide, so I'm going to Why is it missing? I don't know. go back okay so imagine that I have some um, I'm going to talk uh, to someone to a friend of mine and I'm going to describe my home pets okay and uh, uh, the statements which I'm making may look like this for example there is a cat with the name tiger and there is a dog with the name spooky and so on okay so whatever you see on this slide is essentially a data Right, this is some information which I'm transferring to my friend. Okay? And the information in a verbal form looks like this. But as soon as we're talking about information, as soon as we're talking about the data, then by definition, I should be able to put this information into the XML format. Right? Because whatever has to do with the data, I should be able to put an XML. So if with the same data, I put uh, this uh, information into the XML format, this might look like this, okay? This uh, in XML format. So first line is definitely an XML declaration. That's the first uh, header, header. And then <coughs> we're going to talk about this home element, but you can ignore it for now. Uh, I'm saying cat, dog, hamster, and snake, and then I give the names. So you see that if I transfer this information, if I copy this information and send to f my friend, then my friend should be able to restore the original statements with uh, substituting there is, uh, actually adding there is a, and then cat with the name, right? So as, as I did in the previous case. So essentially information is there, it's basically in a different format. We haven't lo uh, lost anything, okay? Information is there, format is slightly different, okay? And in this case, we, uh, what I did actually, I invented these tags. So if what it means is that uh, if I look in this document in the browser, I should not expect that browser will show me cat <coughs> symbols, okay, or images, or dog images, or whatever, because the number of tags can be unlimited. It's up to, it's limited by your imagination, okay? And that's why browser cannot handle them all the way that we, uh, it handled HTML tags, because number of HTML tags were limited, and browser actually used to that. Ba browser was actually created uh, to handle these uh, tags. The browser cannot handle a XML tags, okay, because XML tags are arbitrary, are created by users, and they cannot be handled in a way that browser cannot show, for example, cat, cannot show the cat symbol and whatever, okay, it cannot be done that way. And that's not the point, because important is that information is preserved. And if you look at this document, you realize that the previous slide information, whatever I have here, is perfectly preserved here, correct? So what we have here, we have <coughs> uh, child elements because these elements, all, all these uh, home pets, should be incorporated within home pets or whatever. Uh, I, may, I may call it any, any, uh, differently, I can call my home pets or whatever you feel comfortable with. But it should be one element which encapsulates everything. And that element is called root element. It must be present there. And then I can put my information here the way I like. For example, cat, dog, hamster, and if I have more pets, go ahead, you can add them. Okay, and then you can invent these uh, elements yourself. So they are not called tags, because this actually tags belong to HTML language. They are called elements. And you are free of creating your own elements, whatever you need, uh, feel necessary. For example, you can call instead of cat, you can say my cat, or second cat, first cat, whatever you feel comfortable with. And then you provide names, and then information is preserved here. Okay? Any questions? No? Okay. If there are no questions, we are going to um, create our own first okay, exam. Question. Sure. Is it case sensitive or not? It is case sensitive. So okay. So open uh, tag and close we are, go we are going to talk about that. Okay. So, so what I, I'll ask you to do is just open uh, Notepad 
and create this XML document. Remember, the very first character in your document should be this angle bracket. And then when you create this uh, code, I mean, put code in the uh, uh, notepad, you have to save it with the extension XML. So you have to give document name .xml and save as all files, pretty much like we did in HTML. But in this case, you save with the XML extension. And then after that, you should be able to open in a browser. And then you have to let me know what happens. You expect to see an error, guys. If you do, do, don't see an error, it means that you modify the document, one, uh, one possibility. Second possibility, use Internet Explorer latest version. Okay, one of these two possibilities. Yes? Uh, that's a default application. In that case, you have to right mouse click on that document and select a browser because Dreamweaver will not show the error, might, might not show the error. Okay? And what happens is that uh, this document is not correct document, correct XML document. Uh, and the reason is that, uh, as we already mentioned, I mentioned that, that XML is case sensitive. So it means that if we go back, you see that the root element, it's called home pets with the title case. In this case, we have camel case. We have H and P are capitalized. Mm -hmm. That's called camel case. And the case is, is, is not exactly the same as the starting one. So there is mismatch. So uh, it's not good XML document. And browser is capable of catching that error and tell you that. Okay? So the error message which browser shows you might not be in 100% cases correct one and it points to the correct place. But nevertheless, it will catch the error and tries to find out exact location where it, uh, uh, it lo error is located. In this case, browser sees that this uh, starting home pads does not match the ending home pads, and that's why error is shown. Okay? What you can do, you can go uh, try to open. Which browser you use? Uh, try to use Firefox. That's what I'm saying. Okay? Explorer is actually unfortunately fixes itself. It's not good. And you have exactly like this, yes. and you can uh, open the document. Which uh, Firefox you have? Which version? It's number 13? Uh, that's not good, okay? That's not good. Anyway, uh, that's not good behavior. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll check out how this uh, ver ver verification is possible with the latest Firefox. Okay, I didn't pay attention to that. Oh, Opera, okay, of uh, Chrome. You can try that. Okay. Yeah, but the tendency is that nowadays new versions of browsers try to fix this problem and ignore it. That's not good. Actually, we are not going to learn by that. Okay, <laughs> if the uh, errors will be fixed for us. Okay, we are not going to learn. So, but the bottom line is, I, I'm going to see how uh, you can change the settings so the error will be caught. Uh, bottom line is that uh, XML is case sensitive. So, if you have, for example, home pads in this case, the closing home pad should be exactly the same case. If you have a capitalized K. I mean, a uh, cat here, the title case cat, it should be exactly the same um, capital, I mean, the same uh, capitalization here, it's capital C and then A following by AT, exactly as is. If you make, change the case, put the different word, whatever, that will be not good uh, XML documents, well, bad, containing an error, okay? So this is crucial and you have to follow that. So um, what lesson which we learn by observing the error is that XML tags are case sensitive and uh, uh, we should forget about HTML for giving behavior. Because remember in HTML, we can put in any case, lowercase, capital case, and a mixed case, whatever we like, as soon as the word is uh, what, what we should have, then it will work, it was working. But in this case, it's not going to work, okay? So, um, and browsers actually are capable of catching these errors and showing these errors to you, okay? So let's move forward, unless you have some questions, no? Okay. So um, this is correct code. I decided to capitalize this P. So if, I, uh, if you go ahead and modify the code and see how it will show, be shown in a browser, just please observe that. You cannot edit uh, the code in a browser. You have to open Notepad, edit it, save it, and then open in a browser. So what you need to do is just you need to, uh, you have XML document, right? You should be able to edit it. 
making sure that the case for opening uh, root element and closing root element are the same, so the same case. And uh, it it's that doesn't matter wh what case you decide to use, okay? You can use title case, all capitalized, or lower case, but it should be the same, yes? Now, as soon as the cat is lowercase, the closing cat is lowercase, it should be okay. Okay, so it's actually probably time for me to create this document. Okay, <laughs> so let's let's do let's observe how it works here. Ten, uh, this one. Okay. Uh, copy. So this is my XML document, making sure this is correct, correct case. I save as, I save in a C XML. XML. And save as all files, okay, I save it. Now this is my uh, XML, test XML document, and it should be open in a browser. So that's how it should look like, okay? Now, if I go and change this to, let's say, capitalize C, lowercase here, right? Something like this. So the, they don't match each other, okay? I save this, I reload the document here, uh, it, will not, uh, it, will not show, it will not be exactly the same. So if I open this in the Internet Explorer, but let's open in a different browser, say open with, uh, okay. Uh, Firefox. Okay, so see XML test. See, it shows me the uh, error with the arrow, and then it uh, shows where the error occurred. Actually, it shows to the lowercase C because it assumes that this is the correct element, and then it, this element is not matching. Closing element does not match the opening one, so the error is shown. Okay. So Internet Explore, uh, Explore ignores this. It does not show the error, the latest version. The previous versions are OK. So uh, it's not good. So we use uh, Chrome and uh, different browsers to, um, other than Internet Explorer to, uh, uh, to work with XML documents, OK? Now, uh, if we change it back, like C, so then the uh, problem is gone. That's the way uh, you, should see, you should see the document, OK? You, uh, sometimes the uh, XML right. declaration is shown here, also, uh, but uh, sometimes not. It's not an error, okay? Most important is that our uh, information, the data which we are going to work with, is preserved. So I have my home pads here, listed here. That's it, okay? Uh, XML declaration does not contain data, so it's basically, uh, it might be not shown here. Okay, so any questions? Should be like this, and after the correct, uh, after I corrected the code, then uh, this <coughs> should be shown in the browser. Sometimes you see this uh, yellow stripe on the, on the top of the browser window. Uh, the reason for this is that <coughs> XML document potentially can contain uh, malicious code because XML document can contain binary code, which can be uh, which can harm your machine. Okay. And by default, browser regards this as a harm, as a potential harm to the computer, and shows this warning. So what you need to do is just right mouse click on this uh, yellow part if you see this, and then select allow. Okay, in the, uh, there is no thread. I mean, uh, thread in, I mean uh, in in this document which we create. Okay, so just in the case if you see this, uh, otherwise uh, the document might be blocked. You are not going to see it, the content. Okay, so. Uh, Let's move forward. And the next question which we can ask is that why we don't see this uh, XML document in this following format. Okay, for example, like XML document, these are my home pads, and this nicely formatted way, right? Like ordered and ordered list, whatever. Uh, the reason is that it is possible to do this, okay? But it's not uh, by definition in XML language. And XML language is not created to format your data or just to make your data look nice, okay? It's not a presentation language. As most important is that your infor information about your home pads is preserved, is there, and that's it. 
language actually has done its job. Okay? As soon as the information is preserved, is available, you can see this information, then you should be satisfied with XML. Okay? But it is possible to format the output, but this is actually have to do extra efforts to that. So next thing is that uh, we are going to explore XML document by introducing some errors and see how these errors are going to show up. In this particular case, I forgot about the closing element here. That's what we are going to introduce. And we are going to see what uh, error browser is going to throw. Okay? So the document which you have, uh, you are going to eliminate this uh, cat. So in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this cat, leaving basically empty uh, closing element here. Okay? That's how your document should look like. You already have this document. What you need to do, you need to modify it by eliminating this closing cat element or any element you like. Okay, essentially we have opening cat, but we don't have closing cat. Okay, so when we save this and open in a browser, we expect to see this error. Do you see it? Okay. So browser will try to locate the error, and the error will be located here. It says uh, not well formed. Okay, so it means that don't expect to see detail error. What exactly happens? Cat the closing cat is missing. Whatever it might not be shown here, but what the browser points you to is just this is a position where error occurred. Uh, don't expect that in uh, in all cases the error position will be shown correctly. Okay, in some cases. It may be differently. I mean, uh, location will be shown differently. But you should be able to analyze the document and figure out yourself. Okay? That's actually a very common task. You should be able to, when sometimes you need to create your own XML documents, and you have to make sure that you created it correctly. Browser is your, definitely your friend here. And then browser will show where exactly the error occurred. And then you start from there fixing it. Okay? So do you see this error? Yeah. OK, excellent. Uh, so if you have some funny stuff there, just share with us, okay? <laughs> I'm open for that. <laughs> <laughs> I try to use different browser. <laughs> Guys, you downloaded the latest version, <laughs> which is <laughs> very permissive. I'm use i6. i6, yeah, if you can, try to do that, if, if you have possibility. Because this i6 is actually very good at catching it, okay? Or, or previous versions in general. Um, Okay, so uh, what it means here is that the lesson which we learned here is that XML uh, tags, or uh, to be more exact, XML elements should always be present in pairs. Okay, if you have opening one, definitely it should be some closing one. No exceptions from that rule. Okay, so it makes life much easier uh, in the sense that you, you don't need to remember about exceptions. There are no exceptions from these rules. But also di more difficult because you have to watch that. Okay, you have to make sure that all elements coming in pairs. Okay, so and also they, they are case sensitive at the same time. So what, with the same case which you use for opening, you should have exactly the same for closing one. Uh, uh, then next thing is that missing root element. This is actually a very common mistake. Uh, engineers and general developers do also when they create XML document from scratch manually. Okay, they type the XML document themselves and they actually missing this, uh, they actually forget about this root element. In our case, if we go back to our root element here, you see that the root element is home paths. And you may think that if I'm uh, just starting from the beginning, from square root one, yeah. when I'm talking with to my friend, I list my home paths, I don't mention home paths right here. I'm not saying home paths. I'm saying I have cat, I have uh, a, a snake, whatever, dog, whatever, okay? But I'm not saying home pets, just saying home pets. But, uh, and then you may think that, you know, as soon as I put this data here, this is information about, about my home pets, uh, cat, dog, hamster, and snake, 
homepage actually does not belong here. Okay, it does not carry any information or there's no ne necessity of putting it here. So people forget about that and then omit it. Okay? But this is very important, crucially important, uh, from the point of view that this document, XML document, which we create, or computer can also create this XML document. There are applications which you can easily create an XML document if you provide feed the data. This element is very important when it comes to computer to read the XML document. So when you exchange the data or computer exchange data, computer application read the XML files, this root element must be present. If it's not there, then it's not good XML document, okay? So this is actually more important for computer than for human being when you read the do uh, XML document. So it should be there, okay? And we're going to see how computer application read and write XML document in, in a while. So that's why this uh, element should be there, uh, root element. Uh, basically, this is the element which encapsulates the rest, okay, all data. So anytime you open an XML document, you definitely should see a root element. Yeah. So what happens if we forget about root element? Okay, that's what the next uh, uh, exercise is. So in this case, it says no, no root element. What these uh, symbols mean here is basically comments. I, uh, what it means that this uh, no root elements statement will be ignored by the browser, it will be ignored by any computer application, but nevertheless it's present in the code. So what you can do, you can comment the root element, which is on our in our case uh, home pets, by doing the following. Um, you open angle bracket, no, no spaces, exclamation mark, dash, dash. Okay, that's the beginning of comment line. And then in your case you have home pets, right? then it should have a dash dash angle bracket. So instead of erasing this, you just basically add these uh, characters and then your home pads will be commented effectively. It will be present in a code, will not be erased, but computer will ignore it and that will kind of look like it's missing in a, from XML code. Okay, instead of erasing that, another alternative, you basically comment this, okay? So let's do it together, I'll show you. Why do you use this? Comments? Different names. Uh, why, what's the different names? Spooky, hamster. Yeah. The same. Why different? Hamster is with U, not with A. Spooky is with IE. It's a uh, and uh, Okay, a whatever. Uh, this is actually well, name, of the, uh, uh, name, name of the dog. Answer. This is name of the dog, okay? Uh, hamster is might be misspelled, okay? I agree with that. but. Uh, so uh, essentially, this is the name of the uh, home pet, and this is, the, uh, I mean, the uh, ho ho pet, pet, uh, pet and uh, its name, okay? So if we go to uh, our example, so what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to illustrate you the case when the root element is missing. One alternative is just select it and erase it, but this, since we are going to work with this document, you have to be, you have to type it again, okay? In order to eliminate this, I'm going to comment it, essentially, uh, virtually erase it so this way, okay? I put angle bracket, exclamation mark, dash, dash, and then dash, dash, angle bracket. So what happens is that this line will be present in the document, but browser will ignore it completely, okay? So I, I actually use it correctly here, hmm, okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, so if I save this guy, and then go... Oh yeah, closing cat definitely should be present here. I have to correct the document, okay. See, if you, if you, cre if you modify your XML document like this, uh, you should see some error. If you load that in a browser, you should see, you're supposed to see an error. So and there what you see is, let's load this again. Uh, okay, in my case it says junk after document element. Uh, so what happens is that uh, uh, it re realizes that there are some problems here and then it says home pets does not have opening element. Okay, this is the closing element but it doesn't, it reaches the end of the document and then does not see the 
opening uh, element and then it produces an error. And if you see in my example, it does not uh, point a correct, uh, correct location. It says line uh, number four, dog, column two. Basically, it points somewhere here, which is in correct place. Okay? Mm -hmm. There is no error on this line. That's just an example of incorrect you know, pinpointing to the error position. But you should, it means that you should not fully trust the browser, saying that browser will point to the error. Yes? <laughs> might be, might be that way too. But uh, actually, I, uh, I'm saying that I saw the cases when it immediately no, uh, realizes that I, I don't remember which browser was that. But I think a previous Internet Explorer, it says root element cannot be found, something like that. Okay. In this case, fi Firefox is uh, uh, pointing incorrectly. It, it uh, may assume that the cat it should be root element, but then it says junk after document element. So it means that it realizes that the cat is root element. Uh, and then it's very strange because it should be another nested element here, right? Uh, and then it's basically it's not correct XML document. Okay. So bottom line is don't fully trust the browser, but if browser detects an error, you have to investigate. Okay. That's the bottom line is. So in this case, I just simply remove this uh, comment, comment lines, and then if I save it and load again, I should see that my uh, original XML document is correct in this case. Okay, uh, no problems. Pretty, pretty the same, same way. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the presentation. Okay. Uh, root element should be present, and uh, 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 it should have root element and only one root element. Okay. Next uh, subject is terminology because you should be able to operate XML terminology. Uh, in this case, uh, this is the XML declaration, and it defines XML, the document is XML, it defines its version, and this, uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, version is uh, must, the rest is optional. You may have, this is attribute encoding, you may have uh, 10 or 100 attributes there, that's okay, and the, uh, the declaration might be very big, but don't be uh, actually afra afraid of that, that's okay. It should, the very first character should be angle bracket, and uh, this is actual declaration. We have to have one uh, root element in the document, and only one. Okay, if this uh, rule is violated, then it will be an error. All elements which is located on the root element uh, essentially are children. We are saying root element is a parent, the, the parent, and all elements which are located within the root element are children. Uh, elements which are located on the same uh, here uh, in the same nesting level because cat, dog, and snake here are on the same nesting level, right? They are not including one within each other, so basically they are included only in home pets. That's why these elements are siblings, okay? So uh, dog, snake, cat are siblings to each other. Uh, for home pets, these elements are children, okay? And uh, for these children, from point of view of these children, Home pet is parent. Okay, we also have grandparent, grandchildren. Okay, <laughs> we have that knowledge. Okay, this is official. Okay, uh, in this case, this is the element name. In this case, snake is element name. Ozzy is element value. Okay, that's the terminology. We have element name, which is dog. Spooky is element value. Okay, so you uh, you should not use double quotes when you specify the value. That's an error. So that's pretty much it. Let's move forward with terminology. Any any questions? No. no? Should be pretty straightforward. Last chance before we do exercise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As soon as there are no uh, 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 um, uh, uh, no questions, let's move forward. Uh, as previously said, uh, you can create your own elements and you can give any names to that elements. That's not exactly correct because there are rules which you have to follow when giving names to the elements. First of all, names can contain letters, number, and other characters. And uh, it, they should not start with the number or punctuation characters. That's not allowed. Um, and these uh, letters, three letters, XML, in any case, capitalized, lowercase, whatever, should cannot be used, okay? It should not start with these names. And then names cannot contain spaces. 
Okay, this is another rule. Basically, this rule governs the creation of the elements. If you'd like to create an element, if you follow these rules, they're pretty simple rules, then you are fine. Okay. Next, I'm going to bring an example of that. For example, first name, last name, this is not, these are not two words. These are actually uh, I mean, uh, two words separate. Uh, they are combined with the underscore. Okay, underscore is allowed. And in reality, it is one word, but it looks like that too, okay, which is very nice. And it's widely used technique. Okay, you, you can use that same. Uninstall time and rebuild course, these are okay elements, but they use dashes here. Try to avoid dashes. Okay, so they're allowed, and then the uh, browser is not going to complain about that. But nevertheless, try to use uh, dashes because they may look like a mathematical operations. So that's not, not good, okay? Our customer first name, customer ID provided at reg the registration, they are okay, but a little bit lengthy, okay? Try to use, uh, try to avoid lengthy names and try to use very short ones, okay? So, and also uh, avoid using uh, non-English letters with the uh, national symbols, whatever. Uh, if you change the uh, uh, XML to version 1.1, 1 .1, they will be supported, but you, can, you have no guarantee because this XML document may be so, uh, sent to the machine, which supports only 1.0 and does not support these characters, then your, your document could not be read. Okay, basically application would not be able to read the document. So try to avoid that. Basically, uh, the rule, uh, which is uh, an official rule, which is accepted everywhere, uh, 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 just uh, unanimously is that we're using only English plain Latin one for uh, XML document, okay? And also the, uh, the column character is a reserved character. We cannot use that. And why we are going to see it later today. So these are examples. So next thing is with which we are, what we are going to do is that we are going to do an exercise. So what you need to do, you need to create, open a notepad document and create a document which will list two of your relatives. You can use fictitious name if you're okay with that. And then you have to use these elements that I, I make your life easier to uh, provide information. When you're going to put information about your relatives, you use these elements, okay? And then you have to create a document which will contain information about two relatives. Not one, but two, okay? So you can do it differently. There is no one right way of doing it. You can do it uh, 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 your own way. But most important is that when you create this document, you should be able to load it in the browser and you should be supposed to see that in the browser, okay? If there are error, you should be able to fix it. Exercise is just, uh, let's go to the 20. Okay. 20. These are, uh, essentially, these are elements which I have to use in my XML declaration, right? Say copy. So what I do, I just go to, um, I just erase these home pads. So uh, I'm allowed to use these elements. Essentially what it means that commas are not allowed here. So we erase commas. So I'm saying first name, copy, say Alex, and then first name, closing first name, okay? Now, question which arises is what, where I have to use last name. I can use last name as a, on a new line, or I can go and use last name here. Okay, browser will ignore it. It doesn't matter. Uh, definitely readability will be less in this case. Let's compare with the situation when I put on the new line. Okay, for browser point of view, it doesn't matter. Definitely it's much better for when you're creating manually to use this uh, vertically line. So last name will be say, ooh, okay, something like that. Age, we're going to have uh, essentially age, say 45, age, Closing occupation. So, driver. Uh, and then, uh, uh, should be closing occupation, right? LA where person lives. So what we, f what we forgot to do here is that forgot to put the root element, remember? So I have to create that, I'm saying relatives. And then I have to have opening relatives and closing one exactly as is. So I'm going to have closing relatives. Now this document should be loaded correctly because it looks okay. And then I say, s just save it and then go to the test. And it looks nice, okay? 
as it's supposed to be. The thing is that uh, I ask you to create two uh, information about the two relatives, not one. So essentially what I have to do, I just basically have to copy this part and the paste here, right? So and then I have to use different names, say, okay? And then, okay, something like that, okay? So, yeah. Um, when I save this and go and load in a browser, then my document will look like this, okay? Now, looking at this, uh, uh, at this XML document, you should be able to distinguish who is who, because this is the first person, right? So essentially, when uh, it starts from the f with the first name and ends where a person lives, correct? So because you inspect it visually. But when this document is received by the computer, and then a com computer can mix this up, okay? So essentially, if you are going to ask computer a question, give me please a uh, first name value. Computer will give you Alex and Boris, two names. That might be not what you expect, but the way uh, you write the XML document, all this information kind of a mix. They are located on the same level, and for computer, if you ask first name, it will go and retrieve all values for the first name. In this case, will be Alex and Boris, okay? Now, uh, the way to, uh, the, uh, the next thing which you have to do, we have to distinguish that either one, this is the one person and this is another person, okay? So that's, uh, in order to do that, we have to introduce uh, hierarchy levels. Let's go and see uh, how it is done. In this particular case, if we're talking about the closest relatives, I, I invented, I actually introduced another element and I'm free of doing that. In this case, it will be mother and then father, okay? So, and then in this case, there'll be absolutely no controversy because if I'm going to ask computer, give me father's name, then computer will retrieve that. It should be values here because I didn't have time here, but it should be some values uh, populated here. Okay, the not, not that, okay? Uh, there will be absolutely no uh, problems of identifying who is who, okay? Uh, well, some of you tried this and it worked, okay? And they basically introduced another level of hierarchy. Just observe here that I have two levels of hierarchy. One level is mother, another father, and then within father and mother, I have additional elements. So uh, in this case, first name is a grandchild of relatives, correct? Because uh, relatives is a root element, is a grandparent. We have two levels of hierarchy, okay? Two generations, I'll say. Same here, last name is also grandparent of the, a grandchild of these relatives, okay? Uh, last name and f uh, first name are siblings, and the last name is a child of mother, and so on. Okay, that's uh, how uh, the hierarchy works. So if you create an a, a XML document like this, there's no, uh, I mean, you should be able to see in the browser without any errors. Next question which I'm going to do is, is this, uh, ask a question. Is this document format, basically the document, for, this is the structure of the document, right? Is the structure good enough so we can stick to that and then keep listing our relatives? or uh, we should change something here. So what's your opinion? Don't uh, look at the document, that if, it's can be, if it can be loaded in a browser, it's okay, we have to stick to that, okay? Try to go look deeper and see, is this document good? So we can actually keep using it. Why not? Not simple to edit. We can have editor, we can have editor, so you can be able, should be able to edit the document, and you can add 100 more people here. It is possible, we can solve this. So, other opinions? Not easy to copy paste. You can Actually, I can create an application which will allow you to do that very easily. For example, it can give you some text fields where you fill your information, click a button, it will automatically add to the XML file. So you don't need to edit at all, okay? It can be automated. But the bottom line is, doesn't matter how you input this information, your information is going to be shown in this format. I'm talking about the format. So, and then think that we decided to uh, create this format today and then we're a company, and we're doing some business, and that document will be used and reused, and then we are going to put more information into this document. Question is that, is this skeleton, which we de designed today, 
is going to fi uh, feed our needs or actually fulfill our needs or meet our needs in near future. That's the question, okay? So, or we need to modify it. That's the point. Sorry? Mistake? Uh, yeah, it should be closing father. Yeah, that's, that's uh, I'm going to fix that right now. Uh, 21 here, so that should be closing one, okay. Good, you know, you started <laughs> detect errors, okay. Okay? So what do you think? Uh, no, so let's assume uh, uh, there is a company, there is a company called Ancestry, okay, they're located in San Francisco, and they're hiring, okay? Let's assume you submitted your resume there and they are hired. And their information, they store information about your ancestors or people's uh, ancestors in this format, in XML format. And they are going to devise a document format, like this structure, to cover all your relatives, all your genealogical tree. So would this be a good or not? And you are working for that company. Go ahead. We can introduce one element, uh, or maybe we can specify in a root element. We can say your first name or last name or your ID as a root element, and we're done. Okay, that will be direct link to the uh, format, to the information which we have there. So, okay, stuck. Uh, question is that uh, in this particular case, I listed two relatives, and that was the, uh, the task of the exercise. Now, what happens if I expand my business and I like to list not only my closest relatives, but general relatives, my friends, classmates, roommates, whatever, okay? And it means that if you look at this structure, it, it means that every time I introduce new relationship type, I have to introduce new element, right? So now the type, my number of these elements might be, say, is it go to 40, 50, correct? So this is not easy, okay? So that will be, it means that we have to put more attention uh, creating correct documents, so the validation will be more difficult. And there will be additional tasks for the computer to keep, uh, keep, keep these uh, relationship types in memory and then realize, I mean, uh, analyze this document according to this document. So essentially, we will have more complicated documents if we are going to expand that. So next thing which we are, yes or no? Do you agree? Okay. So next thing which I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, reformat this document introducing a generic tag. So uh, look here, I just introduced generic tag person. It means that I'm going to cover only human relationships. If you are related to your cats <laughs> or home pets, we are not going to cover it here. But essentially all links with the, between human beings, we can do that here. And this, uh, for example, given person here, which we list here, is not uh, actually, is, uh, relationship is not specified here in the, uh, as, a, as a person, uh, kind of Patterson header. Relationship is specified as additional element, which I called relationship, okay? In this case, you can specify whatever relationship you have, or you can specify no value. In this case, it means that you are not related to that person, or don't know that person at all, okay? In this case, the document is more flexible, and it allows you to list all people you know, you might know, you met once, you met twice, whatever. You can, you can put here in this document. So this do document format might be not ideal. You still will maybe room for modifications and improvements. But nevertheless, this document is much more flexible if we comp compare with the previous version. Okay? So more flexibility, the better it is. Okay? Because you are not strictly... I mean, um, strictly limited to the only two uh, close uh, relatives relationship in this case. So if you don't like to specify relationship, that's perfectly okay. What you do in this case, let me grab some pen work. Okay. So what you can say here, you can say, ship and specify no value, like no space here. Okay and then cro crossing relationship, okay? Or alternatively, this is actually long form of writing it. You can write in a short form, which is exactly the same as saying relationship. Okay, 
This, uh, these are exactly the same. This is a shortcut form. This is a long form. Okay? It simply means that we have element relationship which is listed, but it has no value. The value is not specified. It's not, no value here. Okay? So these two forms are equivalent, but mostly you will see this. If you're analyzing XML documents, you will see this form. Okay? Because this is a shortcut form. It's easier. Yes? So what happens when the value is not specified? It means that you are not related. You know, looking at the document, it means that you are not related to that person. So, or uh, a relationship cannot be established, or whatever meaning it is, but it, it's not specified. Okay? So, it depends on how application will show that. Maybe application say, you know what, this is not your relative, or relationship is not specified, or it should be done, whatever. Okay, it might be different, but bottom line is, the information about your relationship with this person is not specified. It's not there. Okay? So... How, how, what the physical meaning is, it's up to the application and developer, but the value is not there, okay? You are not related to that person, okay? So let's move forward then. Sure. So it's still not coming here, so what, what is the error here? What it says? Mm, line number one, column six. Uh, XML, uh, XML, uh, 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 version, you specify version as equal one zero, zero space, after the double quotes. Before question mark, yeah. Try now, save it. Refresh it, F5. Uh, says XML. Uh, why have capitalized XML? Space XML. Space XML. Space. Space. And then lowercase. And then no double cross between XML. So it should be very, st very strict. Yeah. Save, save it. It should work. Let's see. No? Uh, then it should be something in the document itself. Relatives, yes. daughter. But daughter, uh, what is the daughter is? So this, this oh, cl opening and closing one? Yeah. Okay. Relatives, you have wrote relatives. Should work. I don't see any, any problems here, but yeah. there might be some yeah. small type of. Okay. Exactly as this here? Yeah, Encoding is optional, but this one should be exactly as is. Angle bracket, question mark. Yeah. yeah, no space, sorry. No space, uh, XML, yeah. space, version, one, zero, and then question mark, angle bracket. Should be, should be working. Yeah, not capitalized, no, okay. should be small. Okay, should be working. We can look at the during the break. Okay. okay. Now, um, you realize here that relationship is actually crucial information uh, for the person. Okay. So it's actually uh, probably more important than the rest of the information. Might be. Okay. In our case. So what we can do is actually we can specify as additional element, or if we are st 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 stuck to these uh, five elements which I suggested at the beginning. I can, uh, I'm not allowed to put additional elements here, as we agreed, right? So we're only allowed to have used five, uh, five elements. I can put this information as an attribute to the person. So how it looks like here. So uh, uh, this is the version which uh, we have. I, I introduced additional element as a, a additional element relationship. In this case, which is shown in red, I have exactly the same information, but I don't have this additional element relationship. Information uh, about relationship is placed to the person as an attribute. Okay, I can do that. Okay, even more, I can put all these elements as an attribute to the person. Some, some, in some cases, it is done that way too. It's, you are free of doing it. Okay, in this case, I keep intact these five elements which I'm allowed to use but simply I put uh, the relationship next to the person. 
for human point of view, reading these documents is easier than this one because more elements you have, for example, more difficult. Plus, key information about that person is located next to the person. Okay? For computer point of view, this is more difficult to read than this one. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but it's more difficult. It means that a, a developer should put additional efforts when it comes to reading and parsing XML documents. Okay? So you have to read not only elements, but also the attributes. Okay? And some languages, uh, they have problems with reading the attributes, so think about that. So bottom line is, when you are creating a document which uh, is supposed to keep your information about the uh, data which you are going to save, uh, it's better to put additional elements rather than relying on attributes. Okay, the so bottom line is. So, so in, the, sure. in, in the previous one, so in this relatives is the <coughs> root element? In so this case, yes. So, uh, so what is the child element and sibling element? or what in this? Sibling? First name, last name, age, which are located on the same hierarchy level. They are siblings. Okay. Uh, person is a child to relatives. And first name, last name are grandchildren of relatives. Okay. Basically, look at the hierarchy. And based on the hierarchy, you have generations of elements. And based on that generation, you name it. Uh, move forward. Oh, uh, 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 attributes should be uh, uh, should be created for using following uh, syntax. For example, if you have element person, then attribute sex should be specified uh, as a, as this one. So you have to attribute name, and this is the value. Value always should be encapsulated in double quotes. Unlike the element values, in attributes you should always use double quotes. Okay, this is incorrect. This is correct. So look back, going back here. See the mother here. Uh, value mother is encapsulated in a double quotes. But you don't have double quotes in uh, element values. It should not be done that way, OK? So that's a general rule which comes from HTML world too. We have the same with HTML, OK? So no, no difference here. So uh, this is actually bullet points why we should not use uh, attributes when we have possibility to use elements. We are not going to walk over them, OK? So basically, this is just for uh, uh, the general information. You should not memorize it and just be prepared when you go to interview, don't try to recall all this, okay? Basically saying uh, elements is preferable compared with the attributes. So um, to be on the safer side, always use uh, elements compared with the attributes. So next thing which we are going to do, let's see how much, let's have a break because this is actually a big, big uh, topic, okay? I don't like to break in the middle. Okay, so we're going to use this application and play with XML. Okay, so 15 minutes break. <laughs>